like when it's done. Very simple, right? So there's two carbon rod electrodes here. Um, it might say graphite rod on the actual box. So they're carbon rod electrodes. So they're just electrodes that we're going to um, use a silicone cock to attach to the bottom of a standard Petri dish. The next important thing is that you form a watertight seal both below the carbon electrode, around it, and then in between the two to create a little well. And that well is going to hold your cells in there. And that's where the media and the cells are going to be. So it's really important that it's watertight. And it's really important that you have good contact with the electrodes. So you don't want to induce too much, um, but you want to make sure that you wrap it at least one really good twist around the carbon rod. So the carbon rods have these little tips at the end where they kind of taper off. And they're very fragile, so be careful with them. But if you can wrap around those, that's ideal. Because then you can coat it in the silicone and, and really insulate it. So those are kind of the three keys to a successful bioreactor, is the really good contact, the watertight seals, and good placement of the electrodes. So when we're building a bioreactor, what we want to do is recreate the physiology. And so what am I going to connect these wires to? Um, what physiological conditions are we trying to recreate, and, and how can we do this? Do you guys have any ideas what I might connect these wires to? I heard function generator. I heard AC power source. OK. So one of these is going to be connected to one type, and one's going to be connected to the other. So what are the two options? What do we want to recreate? The heartbeat. The heartbeat, right. So kind of what drives the heartbeat? The nodes in the heart. So what do the hearts do? Or what do the nodes do? Signals that travel what kind of signal? Electrical. 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 Pulses. Pulses in the form of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're pretty close. So a flow of electrons. And when we have a flow of electrons in a guided direction, we usually call it an electric current. Current. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your kill me. Is it electric field? You heard of that? Electric field? Yeah? Okay. So, we're trying to, we're trying to, I know it's early. I know it's early. So, we're, we're trying to recreate an electric field. So, we're going to connect one of these to a positive charge and one of these to a negative or ground, right? So that we induce some flow. We complete the circuit between these two. And the flow is just going to go between the two rods, not across just directionally between the two, depending on which direction you connect them, which it honestly doesn't matter. Um, so then what else do we want to recreate? So we have a field. Do we want a constant field? No. We want to pulse it. So I think somebody said pulse earlier. So behind the scenes, this is what's happening. We have two carbon rod electrodes. We charge one. We um, have negative on the other, or ground on the other, and then the force uh, of the field is going to travel in one direction between these two rods. And then it's going to be completely insulated around the sides, just holding that media in. And the media itself is slightly conductive, so you should have a really good flow going through here. Um, so the, the field lines are evenly spaced here, uh, except at the very end, that's pretty normal. So we're going to focus on this area here. And what we want to do is put the cells there and see how they respond to the electric field. So the electric field is the first part, and that's pretty simple to do. It's just the two carbon rod electrodes hooked up to wires so that it gets voltage. The next thing we do, you remember this guy? Yes. He's your favorite, right, from 414, 415. OK, so um, electric field right here. So we have uh, this, this tissue, so let's call that the heart. Uh, for sake of today's comparison. So we have these field lines going through. And what we're going to create is impedance in the heart. So we're going to create these signals going through. Um, and if you look at, this is actual um, thorax impedance here. 
Uh, so Z is the impedance. If we look at that, and then we look at the signals that are sent to it, this is what we're trying to recreate, is that pulse. So we're going to pulse this field and try to get the cells to respond to it. And hopefully, they'll actually beat. But even if they don't, they're going to be sensing the environment, responding to the environment, and then hopefully we're going to get um, you know, realistic phenotypic type of markers out of it. So this is an example of um, the thorax impedance. So this is, um, we have like lung space over here, which is really low because it's just air. And if you look at it here, that's the heart, so it's higher. But it has these two kind of points um, of origin, which is what we're trying to recreate, is some sort of directional <laughs> flow that's going to guide the cell. So we're going to propagate that wave through the cells and hope that they respond to it. So this is the setup. This is also in your notebook. Um, so we're going to pulse a signal using a function generator. Um, we decided on an 8 volt peak to peak output when this was designed. That's alterable if you want to. Um, but the 5 hertz frequency we decided was a pretty realistic pace for the heartbeat. And the 1.5 millisecond pulse duration came from, if you look at this here, I mean, it's probably closer to, to two, but pretty close. So we did a 1.5 pulse duration here to try to induce that same type of impedance that the, the heart would be seeing in, in the real um, physiological conditions. So we have good cells. We have the right type of cell, cardiac myelas. We have the right kind of physiological conditions. We have our bioreactor. So how do we know if we're successful? What are we going to look for? Contractility. Contractility. But again, they may not actually contract. So what do we want to look for if they're not physically contracting? If they're contracting, it's obvious, right? We're like, yay, they're contracting. They're beautiful. Look at them go. But they may not actually contract. So how do we know if we were successful? What can we look for? Yeah, myosin for sure, which is a marker of the correct phenotype, right? So we want to make sure the phenotype is still what we desire after stimulation. We want to make sure that there's still cardiac myoblasts at the end. So one way to do that is to look at myosin. Um, so why might myosin be so important? <laughs> You're right. I just can't hear you. Oh. Exactly what I have written here. So the heavy chain myosin is seeing the contracting myocytes rather than non-contracting myocytes. So even though they may not contract, they'll be ready to contract. So that's what you're trying to do is get them ready for the real world, for when they get placed inside the body and they're ready to contract. So we're going to do heavy chain myosin. Um, light chain myosin is another option but the heavy chain is easier to see with microscopy, and it's also a better marker um, for contractility. So this is what your cells should look like um, once they're in culture. And you want to make sure that they're confluent, kind of similar to this. So they're kind of striated. Um, they should have a clear alignment. And which way do you think they should align? With the field or against the field? with the field, because they're trying to contract this way. So um, they should show a clear alignment. So hopefully you'll look at that and see some alignment. They should be um, multinuclear. So hopefully, again, you'll see that, because we will counterstain with DAPI, which is going to show you where the nucleus is. And you'll be able to see the cell border by adding phylloidin. So we'll be able to see the border of the cell, the nuclei, and then any myosin that might be in there. And it, it's uh, at the type of level of microscopy we're going to be looking at, it's not going to be like linear chains of myosin like you see in all your textbooks that are so pretty. That's beyond microscopy level. So you might see little dots. And um, we're going to counterstain it with a 594, which is what color? Red. Red, yay. So we're going to counterstain it with a red. So you should see some red dots within the border of your cell. And that'll be a good sign that myosin is forming inside the cell and starting to arrange itself. So the future goal is, of course, that we could grow hearts or we can grow patches for hearts and uh, try to really 
recreate um, this beating pattern that we see in the heart on the screen. So um, we're probably not going to do that, right? I think we're all there. But um, by culturing the actual cells itself, we're getting really close, so we have the right cell type. We're mimicking the physiology. Hopefully, we'll see some cells beat. If not, we're going to see that they're getting ready to beat, which is great. And um, that's basically what we're, we're looking for. So there are some key steps in the protocol. Um, one is sterilization. You're going to be making this bioreactor. You're going to be using your hands, of course, because you're placing their ads. Um, the silicone is the kind that you buy from Lowe's, but it has been deemed cytosafe because we did a lot of biocompatibility tests on about 12 different silicones, and this one came out very good. So you can rest assured that we have the right silicone for you that's going to be non-toxic. But the bioreactor itself, non-sterile. So it started sterile, now it's not. So proper sterilization is really important. There is a sterilization protocol in the notebook, but be warned that it has an overnight step. So make sure that you pay attention to that and that you leave it in the UV hood overnight and then you leave it there so it stays sterile and then you'll culture in it. Um, once you get your cells into the bioreactor, um, there's a suggested seeding um, density and that should get you pretty close to confluent, but you want to wait until they're pretty confluent, like at least 80%, because you want them touching. And that's the only way the signal is going to be able to travel across them, is if they're all touching. Um, you want to test the connectivity between your electrodes and wires. One way that you can do that is um, fill it up with some media and make sure that you're getting good signal going across it before you put your cells in. You also, while you're doing that, will want to check that you have a watertight seal because you would hate to get all your cells in there and feel really good about it and then have them all just leak out the side and your experiment's ruined. So those are things you're going to want to check before you start the shock protocol because they're going to take a few days. So we culture them in there. They take a few days to get confluent. During that time, we'll know if it's a watertight seal or not, right, because they'll be in there. Um, you're going to have to change the media pretty frequently because it's a really small volume that you have in there. So you'll want to check them every day and change the media as needed. Um, what else could go wrong? If the electrodes or wires are touching the dish and not the silicone, they can fry the dish. So be very careful that you insulate everything really well in the silicone. You make sure the wires are not sticking into the media at all. Everything is completely encased in the silicone. Um, it's OK if you end up using layer after layer of it just to make sure. But definitely make sure nothing's touching the dish or nothing's getting into the media, because it will fry the dish. Um, and they will burn. So that would be bad. Um, other things that can go wrong. That would also affect your media, because it would start turning really fast and you would see it immediately. I'm trying to think what else could go wrong that went wrong last year. Um, I think that's about it. So depending on what stage they're in, when you get them from Haley, you may or may not have to culture them a little longer, but you're going to start building the bioreactors today. Um, and so half of you will be down doing free AFM time with me, and some of you uh, will be taken up here, I guess, a few at a time to build your bioreactors. So if there's something that you want to scan on the AFM, make sure you bring it. If you already brought stuff, we'll try to throw it on there. And um, this is time for you guys to do everything on it. I'm just going to be there to make sure you don't break anything, basically. So um, be ready for that today. These are some references if you want to read up, um, and they might be useful for writing your lab report, since this is where some of the protocols were taken from. So you might want to look through these. These are also referenced, um, and a few more are referenced in the actual lab manual. So um, you might want to look through those to understand a little bit more about the technologies we talked about today. Do you guys have any questions about the heart bioreactor? How do you go about culturing cells in there for plumbing? 
Yeah. So um, these are supposed to be cultured floating during the first phase so that they can form those bodies. So you actually can purchase petri dishes that are coated for non-adherent cells so that cells will not adhere to it and they float. And what you can do is um, you use little cell scrapers and actually scrape the cell bodies kind of over to the side, tilt the dish, remove the media, and then you can let them come back and, and flood again. The other thing you can do is uh, you can spin them down, but it's a very gentle spin. So you can take everything out, put it into a fifth of a particle, and spin it, and then remove the media. But yeah, it's, it's a very difficult process, and most people end up throwing their cells away at some point. Which is why I didn't want you guys doing too much of that, because it's about a week of that um, culturing them suspended, which is difficult. Yeah, but once you, they they reach the cardiac, they hear. Are you able to change the signal to the cells? And just change. like straight pulses to more like actual. You want to change the protocol? Just the pulses. Sure. Just to write a justification about what you're doing. And that sounds fine. Yeah, that's completely up to you. If you want to change it, that's fine. Just write a justification about what you're doing, and I'm fine with that. Make sure Haley knows ahead of time, too. But I'm fine with that. All right. Well, if you guys don't have anything else,